Hi friends, so there was a very interesting question in my channel and this question was how do you get PhD admission and full financial aid into a top university in the social science field? Now I have made many videos but these tend to focus on STEM disciplines that is science, technology and engineering majors. Today I'm going to talk about PhD programs in top US universities in social science field. So let's pick one university and one discipline. So let's look at Harvard University and let us select the field of economics because this is one of the most popular social science disciplines. Now, of course, there are other disciplines also like psychology, sociology and political science. But most of these are also going to follow a similar pattern. So let's look at this particular case first. Now, some of the things which they mention on their web page is that they are looking for students of high promise so very often in academia when you want to figure out what universities want you should read very carefully the words which they are putting out there because essentially words create reality as far as the academic system is concerned so they are looking at students of high promise and their objective is to facilitate the phd program such that you are able to get a teaching or research role in a university and also Secondarily, you may be prepared for responsible positions in the government, research and business entities. So these are two of the important roles out there. And of course, you are expected to devote yourself full time to the PhD program and study so that you make the best use of your time. So these are some of the important things to keep in mind. Now you are supposed to complete the online application form by the deadline. And this deadline is typically 1st of December of the year. You need to give a lot of documents. You need to upload these on the web page. So these include, for example, your resume, your statement of purpose and transcript of all colleges and universities. So let us look at each of these things. So essentially, of course, you know, a resume. Typically, at this point, you should have a one or preferably two page resume. And certainly when you are giving the resume, some of the things which stand out are the universities you have gone to previously, some of the things you have done in the past. So these could be the internships you have done, the thesis you have done in terms of your bachelor's or master's degree and any papers you have published. These may be conference papers also. In some cases, these may be journal papers, which would certainly create a very positive application as far as your PhD admission is concerned. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that always look at internship possibilities, look at any prizes you can get so that you can separate yourself from the regular population of students and these tend to look good in the resume. Now, the next issue is statement of purpose. And of course, you know, statement of purpose is a document of one or more pages. And this essentially lets the committee know you as a human being. So what are the things which have led you to this final goal? of trying to apply for PhD in this discipline in Harvard University. So again, these may be life stories. The people in the committee are always interested in what is the motivating force behind the person. So there has to be some motivating force out there, which is larger than some normal aim, such as getting a job. You are applying to a top university. So maybe your motivating force is to remove poverty in the world or it could be to figure out how markets work or something big like that so always think that you should dream big during this stage of your life because if you're not dreaming big at this stage of your life then certainly you may not dream big later on in your life also so that's something which they conclude in these committees now as far as the transcript is concerned this of course should reflect all the grades you have obtained over the past many years so certainly your bachelor's degree if you have done a master's degree all these grades should be as good as possible and do remember that people at top universities are cognizant about many of the good universities around the world so try to keep your grades up and go to good universities if you are somebody who is doing his bachelor's degree at a normal university try to do your master's degree at a higher ranked university this is a very good approach if you are trying to get your phd at a top school now you can self report your transcripts. You do not need to get your official transcript at this stage and you can upload this on the web page later. Of course, they will verify the veracity of this transcript. Now the next issue has to do with GRE scores and GRE scores are becoming extremely important 
because this is one way to separate yourself from the regular crowd out there. So most of the time what's happening is that grades of people keep going up. There is a phenomena known as inflation of grades and more and more professors give A grades all the time. Some give A plus grades also. Very few professors are nowadays giving C and D grades and unfortunately or fortunately F grades have become very very rare so this has led to an inflation of the CGPA of all the candidates and so GRE scores have become very important so make it a point to prepare very well for GRE and give this exam because whatever be the rank of your university in terms of bachelor or master's degree whatever be your grades if you have got very good GRE scores then they have to figure out how you got it maybe you are a highly intelligent person so that's something to keep in mind now, if you are a foreign student, you need to give TOEFL or the IELTS exams and get very good scores in them. Now, of course, remember that GRE is valid for up to five years and TOEFL for two years, but try to give as recent scores as possible because that comes across good to the committee. There are going to be no objections if your scores are just a year old. Now, you also need to give three letters of recommendation or what are known as RECOs. And these are to be such that one of these has to be from a university person or somebody who knows you pretty closely. Now, as far as taking a jump to a top level university to do your PhD is concerned, the person has to figure out whether you are going to be able to handle the considerable pressure of the system. So there is a lot of expectation on the student in terms of his or her performance in courses, in research, the fact that he or she should not plagiarize any material and they should be able to read the current literature in the field. So these are some issues which professors typically expect of any person. So again, a recommendation from a person who actually can say some of these things is also a good idea. Now, if you get a chance, you can do some internship in some location, maybe at a different university, maybe at a top ranked university and get a letter of recommendation from this person. So this can strengthen your case if you happen to be a person who has done BS at a regular university. Then, of course, you have the usual things such as the fees and also you have to give a writing sample. Now, this writing sample has to be at least 15 pages in length. So. Of course, if you have written a paper, it's going to be very useful because if you have written a journal paper and even a conference paper, then this comes across as a very strong piece of writing which you have done. And this is certainly going to help your case. If you do not have a paper at this point and many people don't, then you can think of putting something like your thesis if it's a good document. And certainly if you have a thesis, make it a point to write a paper out of this thesis. There are many conferences out there. There are even symposiums and workshops where you can present some work and you can create a document which essentially summarizes your thesis because the problem with the thesis is this document may be very long, very verbose and very few people are going to be willing to read such a thick and big document. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, one of the things they mention is that financial aid is actually given to all the PhD students who are given admission in the program. So essentially they cover you for tuition, health insurance for one person, living stipend for two years, and they try to make sure that you get some kind of TA or an RA, and you also get a completion fellowship in the final year of your PhD. Now, one of the things they mention specifically is that if you are not very well represented in the population, maybe your group, maybe your gender, maybe your country, then what may happen is that they may actually give you some extra preference. Now, in any of these fields, it's important to have a global representation in any class. So, for example, if we are going to study development, then it's certainly useful to have people from various countries around the world and not only from the US. So certainly they try to keep some kind of global cohort as far as the students are concerned. So that can help many people in many cases. And if you happen to be from one of the countries which is not very well represented, then your advantage may be good here. Now, there is some possibility that if you do not complete the application once, if you are not able to get the PhD in the first round, you can, well, you can try once more, but make it a point that you do not try more than three times because 
that's the maximum number of applications which they permit and also each time you are reapplying make sure that you submit all new material you do all the work again and apply so i would of course say that you should apply for the phd at top universities only with a lot of preparation make it a point to make a plan while you are doing your bachelor's degree to go to some of these things like internships so that you can approach people later for good letters of recommendation and also try your best to write a conference or journal paper which actually brings out the fact that you are good in doing research because ultimately PhD is about doing research and the selection committee for PhD is trying to figure out how good you are at doing research and certainly a very good GRE score requires time to build up because the quantitative part is there, the verbal part is there and very often the verbal part is something which takes some time to build up because it's not just about knowing a lot of words, knowing a lot of vocabulary, knowing words such as reticent and taciturn or verbose but you also need to figure out the right grammar the right diction and also you need to know basic mathematics so check these things out many a time people at different universities who study social sciences they tend to neglect math they have forgotten all the math and so you need to go through geometry once again you need to figure out what are quadratic equations you need to figure out what is a line what is a triangle and so get hold of any GRE guide and study it I'm going to put some links on the end screen and also in the description box which are going to help you in getting good GRE scores and get some more information about US PhD programs.